I'm now going to go through making the physical simulation. So if you've seen the other video, I've shown you how to do it using the drive constraint. Uh, but this time I'm going to show you how to do it using Inventor Studio. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go up into environments at the top and you have this one here, Inventor Studio. If you click that, that then takes you into the Inventor Studio environment. And you can see we've now got this new panel along the top and you can see we, we're in, now in the render tab. So you may have used this before um, to make images. So I'm going to show you now how to use it to do animations. So one of the first things I like to do when I'm setting up an animation is if you go to the view tab you can actually change it from orthographic to perspective and you can see how it slightly changes the perspective of the model so then you can get a better angle and I think it just looks a little bit better than just having it in orthographic. So I'm just going to set that up in the centre of the screen and just zoom in a little bit. So now if we go back to the render tab, what we can do is the first thing we need to do is open the animation timeline. Um, and that gives you this down here. So if you've ever used any other video editing software, it's very similar. If you click on this one, it expands it, and you can see that there's nothing in here at the moment. Um, the one next to that there gives you the options of the animation. So at the moment, it's going to be a 30-second long animation. Uh, I'm going to change that to just make it 10 seconds long. And what this is doing here is it's saying it's going to speed up, and then it's going to be full speed, and it's going to slow down at these uh, percentages you can change that you can turn it off but I'm going to leave it because it does with this elbow engine it looks quite good to have it speeding up and then slowing down so that's okay for me I'm just going to put this one back down a second so you've now got these options up here to animate so the thing we're going to do is animate a constraint because we have fully constrained our assembly of course so if I click on this constraint you get this box up here which basically allows you to animate the constraints and as always you can see there's a, an action for us here so we need to choose the constraint um, which I think is on the flywheel web it's angle 7 here so I'm going to select this constraint and say okay you're going to you're going to animate this constraint it's going to start at 0 degrees which is obviously what it's set to and it's going to end at how many degrees so you could say you wanted um, 10 revolutions in 10 seconds then you'll change this to 3,600 but um, I think that might be a bit fast so we're going to go half of that uh, and do 1,800. You can then choose how long it's going to take to go from 0 degrees to 1,800 degrees. So I'm going to specify in here that it's going to start at 0 and end at 10 seconds. So basically that means it's going to do um, 180 degrees every second. If I press OK and just expand this down here, you can see now that I have this blue bit along here which shows I've got something to animate. If I go back to the start of the video, um, and just minimise that and then press play, you can see there, so you can see it's speeding up and it's full speed and then when we get to the last 20%, so from 8 seconds onwards, you'll see it then slows down again. So I think it looks quite good. Um, and the good thing about Inventor Studio is you can animate more than one thing at once. So with Drive Constraint, that would be all that we could do. Whereas in here, you can animate more constraints or you can fade items out to give better visibility. Um, there's a, a whole host of different things you can do here. And just to show you how easy it is, I'm going to fade out. Um, let's do the two cylinders. I'll fade out these two cylinders just so you can see the pistons on the inside. And it's very easy to do. Um, what you do is you click on fade, same as previously, and you can see in the action it's asking what components. So I'm going to click the two components I would like to fade, and you can see it's going to start at 100%, uh, and we want it to end at, let's say, 40%. So that's zero, and 40% you can see is, maybe let's go 50. So 50%, you can see it gives you this preview, and again, you can start and end it. So I'm going to specify for the fade to start at, uh, let's say, three and a half seconds and it's going to end at let's do five and a half so then if I press OK again if we expand this time you can see here that it's showing us where it's going to do it and the good thing about this timeline down here is you can actually use things in here so if I hold control to select these two and right click I can mirror that so now it's going to go from 100% to 50% and then from 50% back to 100% and you can also you can move items around on this timeline so if I wanted it to stay at 40% for a second I can just manipulate this and now if I minimize that and go to start and play you can see that as soon as we hit three and a half seconds it starts to fade out and then it will go back and there you go, it's much better animation, it doesn't take very long to set up at, at all. Um, 
and now what you need to do is you go to record and you get the same box as you would if you were doing a single image so I'm going to change this here um, to some different settings, I'm going to make it a bit larger I'm going to use the current view uh, the lighting style I'm going to use is shop lighting, that's quite good for sort of small units uh, I'm going to keep the current background and I keep it shaded and then in the output you can see we're going to change that, we don't want to do 30 seconds we just want to do 10 seconds anti-aliasing I'm going to go all the way now this format here, what it allows you to do is this will um, render every image back to back um, like a video and then this one will render each image because of course if we're doing 15 frames a second at 10 seconds we've got 150 images that the computer is basically going to render uh, if it crashes halfway through this one then you would lose it whereas if you crash halfway through this say you're at image 30 of 150 it would then start at image 31 when you restarted so if you're doing a very large render it may be worth doing this one but this is quite small so I'm just going to keep it as video format again if you wanted it to be smoother you could change it to say 25 frames a second but for what we're trying to do 15 frames a second is more than enough uh, and then I'm just going to select where I'm going to put that by going in here so I'm going to call that physical simulation with Inventor Studio uh, and I'm going to change that to an AVI file which is what the competition dictates and then I press save and then when you're all ready to do that you just press render and the computer will go away and render that and that's how you do an animation using Inventor Studio